you guys. I hope everyone's being safe and doing well out there given all the craziness in the world right now. So I just wanted to make a video that breaks down the two trillion dollar stimulus package that just passed the United States Congress. It's a very complex piece of legislation but I'm going to break it down for you guys so based on what I feel is most beneficial for my viewers and the average American. So stay tuned. So the biggest economic stimulus in American history just got passed and there's funding for so many different industries and American families to assist with all the economic anxiety and turmoil caused by the COVID-19 outbreak, or as many people would say, the Rona. So many people are feeling the financial effects of COVID-19 as employers are temporarily closed or cutting hours. Many employees are left with no income. However, we all know your monthly bills do not stop. Even if the entire nation goes under lockdown, those bills keep coming in. Perhaps you, a relative, or a neighbor are already working reduced hours on a temporary leave. The reality is that most Americans live paycheck to paycheck and are unable to afford a $400 or more emergency expense. So there's a lot of people out there that are suffering right now. This is why I would say that this law, this legislation, is more of a survival, survival or rescue package versus a stimulus package. It is a start, but I feel given the damage caused by the COVID-19 virus, a lot more is going to need to be done, guys. They're saying this could potentially last to summer or the end of this year. More is definitely going to need to be done to keep the everyday person afloat. So a portion of the bills for unemployment benefits, people who are unemployed would get an extra $600 per week for up to four months on top of state unemployment benefits uh, to make up for 100% of lost wages. The unemployment benefits is definitely a big help for those who've been laid off during this difficult time. Typically with unemployment benefits, you get about half of your salary, but with this new law, you will get your full pay. Additionally, all U.S. residents with adjusted gross income up to $75,000 or 150,000 for married couples will get $1,200, 2,400 for couples. People are also eligible for an additional $500 per child. The payments are going to start phasing out for earners above those income thresholds and would not go to senior filers earning more than $99,000 a year. Now this information is very important. If you earned under $25,000 and did not file a federal tax return last year, you will need to file a return to be eligible for your stimulus check. Very important guys. If you haven't already filed, please go ahead and file your federal tax return. This information is how the government decides who qualifies for the stimulus check. So the Trump administration goal is to start distributing the checks within two weeks. However, to be realistic, I would think it's going to be more like one or two months before the majority of people start receiving payments. Under the stimulus package, those with federal student loans would need to make a payment on their debt until October 2020. So that's going to be a big help for those of you who have student loans. They're also deferring any interest that accrues during that time. It will be waived. The U.S. Department of Education it will also stop any collection practices as well. The healthcare industry is getting $100 billion in grants to help fight the coronavirus and make up for the dollars they've lost by delaying elective surgeries and other procedures to focus on the outbreak. They would also be getting a 20% bump in Medicare payments for treating patients with the virus. The airline industry is receiving $58 billion in total, $29 billion in grants and $29 billion in loans and loan guarantees, as well as a waiver for paying three of their major excise taxes on the price of a ticket, the fuel tax, and cargo tax. That funding comes with regulations, which I think is a good thing, so no stock buybacks and limits on executive compensation to start. Half the funds would go towards the continuation of payment for employee wages, salaries, and benefits, while the other half would go to loans and loan guarantees for passenger airlines, repair stations, and ticket agents. Businesses will get a tax credit for keeping idle workers on their payrolls during this most difficult time. As long as the business meets certain criteria, they would get a refund for half of what they spend on wages, up to $5,000 per worker. So this is to help businesses. For employers and self-employed individuals, you're allowed to defer the 6.2% tax paid on wages that is used to fund Social Security. The bill also provides $25 billion for food stamps and child nutrition. The $25 billion for food assistance includes nearly $16 billion for the SNAP program 
and nearly $9 billion for child nutrition. So I wanted to provide a breakdown of some of the highlights of the $2 trillion stimulus package. Like I said, it's very complex and I think it's a great start. It doesn't go as far as I would like to see and I think there are some gaps or loopholes for some Americans and the most vulnerable. So the bill allows a one-time $1,200 payment for most Americans, which is good, but Canada on the other hand is paying $2,000 to individuals over a four month period. Additionally, there are a lot of older Americans, students, low income Americans, homeless people who did not file returns. If you did not complete this process, then those people will not receive their $1,200 stimulus check. Also, those that make more than $100,000 a year in single do not qualify for stimulus funding. Now, while $100,000 is a good amount of money to make, that really does depend on where you live, in my opinion. For example, if you're in LA, San Francisco, New York, that's not the same as someone who may live in the Midwest or parts of the South where the cost of living, the cost of renting, the cost of everyday life is just way cheaper. Additionally, someone making that much money, making $100,000 or more a year, is usually paying at least a third of their income in federal taxes. And what if they're supporting a family member or a relative? When you think about it, depending on where you are, it's really not that much money. While I do feel higher dollar amounts should go to those less fortunate, I don't personally agree with the income cutoff. I really hope you found value in today's content. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you turn on the notification bell so you get up-to-date content. And as always, please leave any comments or feedback because I greatly appreciate it. And I, Joe, also want to know what you know. Thanks and have a great day.